DeGeorge syndrome is the topic. And DeGeorge syndrome happens because there's a gene deletion uh, in chromosome number 22. And in particular, the, there's a region of the chromosome called Q11. And that's what's in uh, that's the chromosome that's involved now what that results in is a embryological problem when the fetus is developing there is a, a, a embryological component known as the pharyngeal pouches and those don't develop properly and in particular it's the third and the fourth pharyngeal pouch and this is something that happens embryologically during the uh, time that the fetus is uh, approximately the first eight weeks or so of gestation. Now, what that does is it leads to the main problem of uh, DeGeorge syndrome, and that is there's two glands that uh, are improperly developed. The first is the thymus, and the next one is the parathyroid. Um, and that is really the main reason why you have all the symptomatology of DeGeorge's syndrome. Thymus and parathyroid. And this is sometimes uh, referred to as thymic and parathyroid uh, hypoplasia or aplasia. And I think it's important to discuss what exactly is the thymus and the parathyroid. So the parathyroid is um, an endocrine gland and it produces a hormone known as PTH. PTH just stands for parathyroid hormone. And the mechanism or the action of parathyroid hormone is that it increases calcium levels in your blood. That's what parathyroid does. The thymus is responsible for the maturation of T-cells and these T-cells are very important because they're part of your immune system uh, they're used to fight off pathogens and those pathogens uh, include bacteria, uh, paras uh, bacteria, fungi, viruses, things like that so obviously both of these organs are very important, glands are very important so let's take a look at the symptoms, the physical exam, and the history of presentation of a patient with DeGeorge syndrome. Well, the first thing I wanted to talk about is something called abnormal facies. Abnormal facies, I'm referring to the way the, the facial structure will be of the child. There's three key things I wanted to show. The first one is that the child can have a cleft lip or a cleft palate. And that is basically a, an opening uh, in the cleft, uh, the lip or the palate that needs to be surgically corrected. The next one is a shortened, a shortened philtrum. Now, what's a philtrum? Philtrum is this area right here, right there. I hope I hope uh, I was able to draw those arrows in. That will be very short basically the from the nose to the lip the next one that's a, another characteristic facial uh, abnormality is something called hypertelorism now what's that mean hypertelorism basically means that there's a large distance between the eyes and in this diagram I, I tried to my best to uh, you know exaggerate it to show that there's a very large distance between the eyes so those are some of the key abnormal facies findings in DeGeorge's syndrome. Uh, the next very important uh, part of the history and the symptomatology is the child will have recurrent infections. And the reason is because, remember, the thymus is not properly developed, so the T-cell maturation is not um, uh, appropriate. And as a result, since T-cells are responsible in fighting infections, you will have recurrent infections and especially for some reason candida infections which is a fungus 
The next thing that will be part of the presentation is something called tetany. Now what's tetany? Tetany is basically these involuntary muscle contractions, kind of like twitching. And you can see this actually on the person's face. The facial muscles are oftentimes uh, involved. And this happens because of hypocalcemia. I remember the parathyroid gland is not properly developed and parathyroid gland is responsible for increasing calcium levels in the blood. So when you have hypocalcemia and de George's syndrome, you can get tetany. So how do you diagnose this? Well, there's several tests that you can do. The first one is you can measure the actual T cell counts. Uh, the next thing that's a very simple test is measure calcium levels. That will be low. The next test is actually a very specific test. It's like doing a chromosome analysis. And in particular, you are looking at chromosome 22, and the region is Q11. And one test that's actually very interesting that they oftentimes test on clinical vignettes is a chest x-ray. Now you say, well, why, why a chest x-ray? What's that have to do with the Georgia syndrome? Well, remember, the thymus is absent. So the chest x-ray, you will see that actually. So that's part of the diagnostic workup. Treatment. Unfortunately, the treatment, other than calcium supplementation, the treatment is actually a very uh, um, complicated and difficult one, and it involves transplant of thymus tissue. So it's a very, very um, uh, difficult and uh, complicated way of treating this uh, condition. So let's now turn our attention to a few clinical vignettes. Pediatric intern notes that a neonate with dysmorphic facies is twitching abnormality. As he watches, the baby experiences a seizure. Stat labs indicate a glucose of 90, sodium 140, serum potassium of 4.2, and a serum calcium of 3.9. Over the next several months, the child is admitted to the hospital twice for candida infections and once for a viral exanthem. Which of the following is most likely diagnosis? Well, it's great. Great question. They talk a little bit about the abnormal facies. This twitching is the tetany. And he, the child, uh, the, the neonate, has tetany because of hypocalcemia, and that's also uh, presented in the uh, clinical vignette. And they also start talking about these recurrent uh, infections. So it all points to De, De George syndrome. The next one, five-year-old boy suffers from a condition characterized by recurrent fungal and viral infections, thymic hypoplasia, tetany, and abnormal facies. Serum levels of immunoglobulins are mildly depressed. Lymph node biopsy shows lymphocyte depletion of T-dependent areas. Which of the following is the underlying pathogenetic mechanism? Well, again, they're definitely describing de George syndrome. This is an embryology type of a disorder. It happens embryologically, and it's because the chromosome deletion of uh, involving chromosome 22 leads to the failure of the development of the third and fourth pharyngeal pouch. And that, of course, goes on. Uh, to lead to the thymus and the parathyroid gland uh, not developing properly. And finally, a four-month-old male presents with twitching of the facial muscles. He has previously been seen for several episodes of candida infections. On exam, the child has low set ears, hypertelorism, and shortened philtrum. What additional findings would likely be in this individual? Well, again, the tetany is described here as a twitching of the facial muscles, recurrent infections with candida. Hypertelorism um, was, I described, it's the large distance between the eyes, shortened philtrum. That's also a characteristic finding, uh, part of the abnormal facies of DeGeorge syndrome. And if you remember, if you do a chest x-ray, because the thymus is absent, that will be uh, seen. So therefore, choice A.